Hi, this is a video which is based around a Flash application I built some while ago. The goal of this video is to introduce people who are trying to build mapping applications about the various options there are in building an, an application, both client and server. We'll talk about proprietary, which is software which is paid for, and we'll also talk about open source options as well. So let's just step through the, through the Flash application. As you can see, we start with a screen which asks the question. So you want to build uh, a rich interactive mapping application. By the way, I'll include the URL to this uh, tutorial, uh, to this Flash uh, application at the uh, lower part of the video. So let's start. The, let's walk through and look at some of the options we've got. First, think about the application. So what type of a mapping application are we going to build? I've given three basic options here. The first one is a GIS application, which is a geographic information systems, which is uh, using intelligence on the server end to do various spatial analyses. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. The second one would be the type of applications which have become very popular for consumers, sometimes called mashups. Google Maps is a very good example of, of a tool which, uh, or an API set of tools which we can build those type of applications with. And then finally at the bottom we've got mobile. So let's talk in a little bit of de depth about each of these. Let's start with GIS. We'll click the tab here and it will take us to um, just a, an example of actually a front end that I built some while ago in Flex, which is a front end to a, a spatial, an open source spatial server called um, Map Server. So let's uh, look at what open source option we've got for doing work with GIS. Well, I've broken it down into a number of tiers here. Let's start with the client. So this is what actually runs in the browser. Potentially there's three, and this is not an exhaustive list of course, there's potentially three um, APIs that we can work with here. There's the Open Layers API, which is uses AJAX as written in JavaScript. There's Modest Maps, which is a Flash and/or Flex API. Now I'm hesitant in including that here because most of Modest Maps is actually used for consumer mapping, not for GIS. Mapstraction is another open source tool which uh, uses JavaScript. Now what has been added to this list since I did this video? and you'll see in other videos that I do are is open scales which is essentially a porting of the open layers API to flex so moving in deeper into the into the tier so to speak we've got tiling and caching options Google Maps introduced the idea of tiles and uh, caching as being something which speeds up the ability for you to reach back from the client to um, get tiles and display them there's a number of options there, KA map, tile cache, geo web cache and mod tile are all options to do this kind of work. Um, we'll go back to that one in just a second. Uh, so from the server end we've got map server which is PHP Python based, geo server which is a Java based option, geo Django which is Python is more of a framework and geo rails which is a Ruby on, it's just like Ruby on Rails but for geo applications and again more of a framework. But those are the three options. The popular ones here are Map Server and Geo Server. I usually lean towards Geo Server. Geo Server is is it, it, you need to have a, um, an application server since it's based in Java, but it's a it's a really a fully it's a, a real loaded uh, ge geospatial server, and it actually has I believe it's Geo Web Cache built into it. So you've already got the caching option built into it as well. It's also got open layers built in, so when you add a, add a layer, you'll be able to actually see it very quickly by pulling up the open layers client and viewing it there. Final part piece of the pie is, is the database, and we've got um, MySQL PostGIS Postgres here. The PostGIS Postgres piece is open source, as I've said. Um, PostGIS is like ArcSDE. It is actually not database per, per se. Um, it is how one hooks the server to be able to talk to a, intelligently in a geo way to a database and in this case post postgres um, so an excellent option that's the tiering for gis very briefly let's for open source let's talk proprietary lots of proprietary options these are just some esri have got arcgis on the back end but we, they've also got a number of apis on the client end 
Um, they've got one for JavaScript. They've one. They've got one for Flex. They've got. They've got a number of, of, of front end and Silverlight, of course, front end uh, client APIs. Other options here. Open layers can be used. Um, actually, I don't know why I've got open layers here because that isn't proprietary nor modest map, so that shouldn't actually be in the list. I, I need to edit this. Um, the server end of things. We've got Ar ArchIMS and ArcGIS, which are both the SRI products. Autodesk have got Map Guide, Erdas, Image Map Server, Pitney Bowes have got Map Info. So there's a whole load of options here. Now, they're various prices, of course, um, but there's some really, really good options. Back end, we've got ArcSDE, which is, again, the hook into an Oracle database, for example, or, or, or a series of other databases from ESRI. We've got Oracle, IBM, and, and, and Microsoft um, database on the back end. Again, I need to make the point that databases are not geo-enabled, at least I don't think Oracle is, but most of the other ones aren't, so you need to have Arc, Arc SDE or you need to have um, PostGIS to, to, to do this. Um, let's go back and look at some of our other options in terms of uh, the consumer-based mapping. If we move forward on this, then uh, here's, a, here's an application I built for a snowboarding magazine. Um, which actually uses Modest Maps. We're walking through this client options. Modest Maps, Flex Flash API, Open Layers is a, is a JavaScript API, uh, Map Extraction is is another option, which I think is flat, flash, Flex based. Um, in terms of servers, we've got a whole load of backends there. Blue Marble is 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 NASA, and that actually gives us uh, satellite imagery. Open Street Map is is the um, is the community mapping of a vector mapping. Um, which shows us streets, and then Google and Yahoo provide their tiles as well. Um, and then, of course, there are a whole load of data sources we can use. We can use GRSS, RSS, and REST to actually pull data feeds from elsewhere, which aren't actually part of a, of a server. From a proprietary perspective, I've added the Google, Yahoo, MapQuest, and Microsoft APIs in there. They're free. Um, the APIs are free, but they're locked, so to speak. So you can't actually get access to the code. Where they're going to with this stuff, it's obviously advertising based, so I'm going to conclude this in proprietary since it isn't strictly speaking open source. Again, their back ends are, we've just spoken about that, they've got a number of, they've got their own proprietary servers in the back end, which we know little about, um, and then the same proprietary data feeds as well. Um, on mobile, mobile is going to be exciting from a Fleck developer's perspective, such as myself um, and Flash developers when. Finally, uh, Apple decide to allow the Flash Player to run on their application, um, on, on their platforms rather. So there are a number of open source options, iPhone, Android and Blackberry have PhoneGap, which is a JavaScript open source um, API for those, those, uh, those particular phones. And then Modest Maps runs on, on the Nokia using Flash Lite, which is ActionScript 2. Proprietary. Android, uh, there's Google Android which is Java, we've got Blackberry which is Java, we've got Object C which runs on the Apple iPhone um, and then Flashlight as I've mentioned and the Java, JavaScript's got the OVI which is the Nokia uh, API which hooks into to their phones as well. So there's a bunch of options there as well for phone but like I said when uh, Apple supports the, uh, the iPhone, when Apple supports the Flash player it'll give us a whole world of, of new opportunities for the Flash and uh, for the Flex platforms. And now we've got the, the iPad, which has just been released. We've got a bigger screen, which gives us even more opportunities to work with, uh, with mobile applications. So lots of excitement on the, in the Flex and Flash worlds um, with these new mobile devices coming out. Okay, that's that. Thanks for watching.